Welcome to lesson 10D, stream function, cylindrical coordinates. In this lesson, we define the stream function in cylindrical coordinates. I'll show you how to plot streamlines, and we'll do some example problems. First, the definition. There are actually two possibilities, planar flow, which is flow in the R theta plane, and axisymmetric flow in the RZ plane. Let's talk about planar flow first. Planar flow is in the same 2D plane as the XY plane that we talked about in a previous lesson. Here are our XY axes. We define R as the radius from the origin and theta as the angle from the X axis. Instead of U and V, we use velocity components UR and U theta, defined at some point R theta under consideration. Well, as we did with Cartesian coordinates, we start with the continuity equation. Recall in cylindrical planar coordinates, we had 1 over r del del r r u r plus 1 over r del del theta u theta plus del u z del z equals 0. We'll talk only about two-dimensional flows, which means u z is 0 everywhere, and del del z of anything is 0. Once we eliminate this term, we see that there's a 1 over r in both of these terms, so we multiply by r. So we get this 2D continuity equation for incompressible flow in the r theta plane. Now we define psi, the stream function, in such a way that it exactly satisfies this continuity equation. Here's the definition that we use. ur equals 1 over r del psi del theta, and u theta is negative del psi del r. This is our definition of the stream function in terms of derivatives. Let's verify that this makes the continuity equation hold. The first term yields del del r of del psi del theta, since the 1 over r here cancels this r here. The second term gives us del del theta of negative del psi del r, which we rewrite as del squared psi del r del theta minus del squared psi del theta del r equals zero. And for a smooth continuous function, psi equals psi of r and theta, the order of differentiation shouldn't matter. So these two terms cancel and continuity is exactly satisfied. This is true for any smooth continuous function, psi of r and theta. The other option is axisymmetric flow. This will be in the rz plane with no theta dependence. This is still a 2D flow since the velocity components and psi will depend only on r and z, two variables. I'll try to sketch this three-dimensionally. Here's our z-axis. Again, if we define radius r and angle theta from the x-axis, we can think about an axisymmetric body, such as this torpedo shape that's round in the theta direction. In other words, if you rotate in the theta direction all the way around, this body does not change. Again, like an axisymmetric torpedo or a sphere, for example. At some point in the flow, we define the location by radius r and distance z from the origin. So our coordinates are rz, and our velocity components are ur and uz, which I illustrate here at our point of interest. We can incline these at any angle theta, and we would see the same velocity components. Note also that del del theta of anything equals zero, which is another way of saying that this is rotationally symmetric. Again, let's write the continuity equation, the same one we had previously, but now it's this term that goes away, since nothing depends on theta. Now we define psi, again by its derivatives. A common way to do this is ur is minus one over r, del psi del z, and uz is one over r, del psi del r. Again, we can plug these into the continuity equation to verify that any psi as a function of r and z satisfies this continuity equation. I'll let that as an exercise for the viewer. And though I introduced this for axisymmetric flow, we will not discuss the stream function for axisymmetric flow in detail in this course. In other words, we'll use planar flow in our examples from here on. And the stream function for planar flow will come up again when we talk about potential or irrotational flow later on in the course. Let's do an example problem. We have a 2D flow field that's steady in the r theta plane. And here we'll give the stream function. We want to derive expressions for ur and u theta and convert them to Cartesian coordinate velocity components. And we'll also sketch some streamlines. Since this is a planar flow, we use the appropriate equations 
which we have above, namely ur is 1 over r del psi del theta. So from this equation, del psi del theta is v theta r cosine theta. So ur is v theta cosine theta. Similarly, u theta is minus del psi del r, which from our given psi is minus v infinity sine theta. So that's our answer for u theta. Now let's convert to u and v. I'll resketch the axes, both x and y axes, and r and theta axes. And we see from simple trig that x is r cosine theta, and y is r sine theta at any point in the flow. So this equation for psi becomes v infinity times y. So the equivalent psi in xy coordinates is psi xy equal v infinity y from which we can calculate u and v. u is del psi del y, which is v infinity. v is negative del psi del x, which is zero. So our answers are u equal v infinity and v equals zero. Then we were asked to sketch some streamlines. Well, this is a very simple flow. It's uniform flow in the x direction. So the streamlines are just horizontal lines with constant speed v infinity. And we define psi along each streamline where these constant psi values are proportional to y itself, where y is in the vertical direction here. Suppose v infinity is 10.0 meters per second. Let's calculate v dot over b, where b, as before, is the distance into the page. So this represents a volume flow rate per unit width into the page. And we'll calculate that between streamlines at y equals 0 and y equals 5 meters. Well, v dot over b is psi 2 minus psi 1. And since psi is v infinity times y, this would be v infinity times y2 minus v infinity times y1. We'll call this y1 and y2. When we plug in our numbers, we get 10.0 meters per second times 5 minus 0 meters. So v dot over b is 50 meters squared per second. Notice that this is a volume flow rate per unit width into the page, so the units are meters squared, not meter cubed per second. Let's do another example. Here we have a steady 2D flow in the r theta plane with this velocity field. Now we want to generate an expression for stream function and sketch some streamlines. First, let's just check continuity to make sure that this is a valid incompressible flow. I write our continuity equation in cylindrical coordinates r times u theta gives us constant c. So the r derivative of a constant is 0, and u theta is already 0, as is uz. So the sum of these three terms is 0, and continuity is indeed satisfied. To find the stream function, we follow the same procedure that we did previously for Cartesian coordinates. Namely, we pick one of our psi definitions. To start with, I'll pick this one. ur is 1 over r del psi del theta and we know that ur is c over r from the given information. This becomes del psi del theta equals c when we multiply both sides by r. Now we can integrate psi equals c theta plus a function of the other variable, which is r, since this is a partial integration. Now use the other psi definition, u theta is minus del psi del r, which from here gives us minus f prime of r. But we know from the given information that u theta is 0. So f prime of r is 0, which we can integrate. So f of r is some constant. Note that we don't set this to be a function of theta, or we'd be chasing our tails. So finally, this equation for psi, which is a function of r and theta in general, is c theta plus a constant. This psi is only a function of theta. What do the streamlines look like? Well, remember that lines of constant psi are streamlines in this flow. And from our equation, lines of constant psi are simply lines of constant theta. So for some value of theta, we get a value of psi. Pick a different value of theta, we get a different psi. The streamlines are rays emanating from the origin in all directions. We can label these streamlines psi1, psi2, etc., where psi1 would correspond to some theta 1, and psi 2 would correspond to some theta 2, etc. By the way, in fluid mechanics, we call this a line source. It's a line into the page here, 
since this is planar flow that's independent of z direction, and it's a source, all the flow emanates from the origin, which is a singular point or a point of singularity at the origin. Let's think about what this means. I'll sketch two streamlines in the first quadrant. We'll call these streamlines psi1 and psi2. And by definition of a streamline, flow cannot cross a streamline. It must be tangent to a streamline. So our velocity profile between these two streamlines at this radius will look something like this. And at a larger radius, it has to have a smaller speed and look something like that. If we call this radius r1 and this radius r2, we know that v dot r1 must equal v dot r2, since whatever volume flow rate is passing by this location must also pass by this location, since no mass can cross these streamlines. Now think about what happens as we get close to the origin. We call this a singularity because as r decreases, the speed has to get higher and higher, and the speed is actually infinite at the origin. This is a mathematical singularity. It's not physical, but it's useful as a model, which as I said we call a line source. As long as we don't try to solve anything right at this singularity, we can still deal with this flow field. I want to reinforce that streamlines can never cross each other. If this is some streamline psi1 and psi2, they can't cross each other, again because the mass flow rate or the volume flow rate between these two streamlines must stay constant. So if you have a situation like this, you would have a singularity, which is exactly what we have here, because all of these streamlines converge at the origin. Another way to think about it is that all the mass that is flowing out from the origin is produced magically at the origin. It's a source which violates conservation of mass. But we can imagine that we generate all the mass right at the origin and then let it flow radially outward. We'll come back to the line source later when we talk about irrotational potential flows. And line source will be very useful to us. I'll do one final example. Again, we have a steady 2D flow field in the R theta plane. This time we have one unknown velocity component and one known one. And since it's 2D, uz is 0. We want to generate expressions for ur and stream function psi. To find ur, we'll use 2D continuity as we did previously. In 2D, we have del rur del r plus del u theta del theta equals 0. Here, u theta is not a function of theta, so this term is 0. So del ur del r must equal 0, which we can integrate. We get rur as a function of theta, since this is a partial integration. So our answer is ur is a function of theta over r. And any function of theta will satisfy continuity. You can see that because if we plug ur back into our continuity equation, this r cancels this r, and we're left with a function of theta, which is not a function of r at all. So we get 0 plus 0 equals 0. Well, let's pick this function of theta to equal k, which is a constant. So this function of theta is not really a function of theta at all, but just a constant. So this is kind of a trivial case, but it's a valid function that we can pick. So our ur is just constant k over r. You can pick other functions of theta if you choose. Now let's calculate psi. Again, I pick one of our definitions. I pick this one, where u theta is c over r. I integrate with respect to r. I get negative c natural log of r plus a function of the other variable, theta. Now we use the other definition of psi. Del psi del theta is r u r equal r k over r, which is equal to constant k, where we use this expression for u r. But from here, del psi del theta is f prime of theta. So we equate this expression with this expression for del psi del theta, keeping my color code f prime of theta equal k, which we can integrate and get f of theta equal k theta plus an arbitrary constant. Finally, we plug this into our expression for psi. So psi of r theta is negative c natural log of r plus k theta plus a constant. And that's our final answer. You can verify that ur is 1 over r del psi del theta. Turns out to be k over r which agrees with this, and u theta is minus del psi del r, which turns out to be c over r, which agrees with our 
given information in the problem statement. You can plot streamlines by choosing psi values and setting this constant to something and knowing these two constants as well. You're welcome to plot this to see what this flow looks like. Thank you for watching this video. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel for more videos.